what do we do about energy and momentum? So here's the conundrum. In, in Galileo's symmetry, things happen to space, but they don't happen to time. So there's a really an asymmetry here between time and space. Time is absolute in classical physics. But space is not. You can move relative to another observer. But you're all stuck with the same flow of time. That's what, what Galileo is saying. And when, if we write down the momentum of a particle in classical physics, it's the mass times the velocity. And remember, momentum has to do with spatial trans translations in space. Its conservation law comes from space, space translations, according to Emmy Noble. If we work out the energy of a particle in classical physics, it's one-half mv squared. And I can write a relationship that just eliminates v. Energy equals momentum squared over 2m. This is a very asymmetrical formula between energy and momentum. But that's not surprising, because Galileo told us there's a very asymmetrical behavior of space under boosts and time under boosts. Time doesn't change, space does. So we get energy to the first power, momentum to the second power. That's what we get. And it works. It works very well in classical physics. But Einstein is telling us that space-time has a symmetry, a geometry, if you like, in which if you have an interval between two events in time, of t, and an interval of x, c squared t squared minus x squared will be the same for all observers. In particular, if tau is 0, that describes the motion of light, so all observers will find the same speed of light. How do we get a relationship between energy and momentum in relativity? This is what we had in classical physics. E is p squared over 2m. What do we do in relativity? Well, we remember Emmy Noether's theorem, which tells us that energy comes from the invariance of the laws of physics in time. Momentum comes from the invariance in space. So there must be a more symmetrical relationship between energy and momentum. You can think of the speed of light as just a thing that calibrates time and space. You can just take the speed of light to be 1 and use light seconds and for distance and seconds for time. And, and you see this is much more symmetrical. Time squared minus x squared equals an invariant. So now energy squared minus momentum squared must equal an invariant. Einstein had to guess what this invariant is. Okay, It starts as a guess. So let's just guess that it's got to do with the mass of the particle and the speed of light. The speed of light is just getting all the units right. It's getting all of physical dimensions right. So this is the relationship now between energy, momentum, and mass. And what it means is, if you're moving, let's say you made a top quark at Fermi level. You measure its energy, and you measure its momentum. You take its energy squared minus its momentum squared times c squared, you'll get its mass, the mass of the top quark squared times the speed of light to the fourth power. What if you make a top quark going at a much higher uh, energy at the LHC. You'll get a much different energy and a much different momentum. And that's what's seen by an observer in a much different state of motion relative to the Earth Fermi It would be an observer who's been boosted relative to a slower top quark that we would make. But it's still true with the new energy of the top quark at the LHC. And the new momentum, if you substitute its energy squared minus momentum squared c squared, you'll still get the top mass squared times c squared. So that is the defining symmetry. That's this symmetry plus Noether telling you how energy and momentum are connected to space and time. It's the corresponding dual symmetry condition for energy and momentum. But notice something weird now. It doesn't just give you the energy. It gives you the square of the energy. So to calculate the energy, we have to Put momentum squared plus c squared on the right, on the left hand side over here. e squared equals p squared c squared plus m squared c to the fourth. Then we have to take the square root. And now you see why Einstein guessed this had to be right. Because if you take the square root, you get a constant term, plus you get a motion term, p squared over 2m. Plus you get higher order terms that go like 1 over high, high powers of the speed of light, which you wouldn't see if the system was moving slowly. So apart from this thing, Einstein has recovered 
Newton's relationship for small velocity objects. But he's gotten something really incredible as well. He's found that energy for a resting object is not zero. It's mc squared. E equals mc squared comes from the space-time symmetry that defines inertia, defines the states of motion, transcribed into an equivalent statement for energy and momentum, solving it, and then get matching, if you like, this to this, predicts this. And now we have the nuclear age. You know, we can make, we can, we can take a nucleus of, of one mass and break it apart into pieces that have smaller masses. And the energy really does come out as the difference in the initial masses minus the final masses times c squared. That's not bogus like the Acme power company. That's called nuclear power plant. So we can really do cool stuff with this. Now, are you suspicious of this at all? Is there something peculiar here? 